Hey everyone, I'm Noble Absinthe, and this is my Samurai Jack Retrospective. Today we're on Season 5, Episode 2. Let's get started. Alright, so everything I said in Episode 1 about how I feared Aku is not going to be seen until the very end, yeah, those fears were alleviated within the first 10 seconds of this episode. I am so glad I'm the god of being wrong. It's also one of the most fitting ways to reintroduce Aku. Just contrast all the serious shit we just saw in the previous episode with Aku doing his normal morning routine. It's like Aku has been waiting well over a decade to be back on the big screen again. Just, uh, look at this smug piece of shit. He knows he's fucking with the tone, but he doesn't care. Because he's Aku. Turns out he's bored with his supremacy. He sees the typical stupid crap every day. Obedient followers that have no chance of usurping him. Scientists improving his largely pointless army. But now he goes to therapy. Turns out Aku destroyed all the time portals and has been patiently waiting for Jack to just die of old age. He just can't believe Jack is still fucking alive. Oh, and he breaks the fourth wall too. I just, I just love this character. Once we transition back to the Jack side of the story, we again get reminded of the absolute drastic change in art quality. Seeing Aku was like a blast from the past, and now we're here. You see that? That's Gaussian blur. We've come so far. Anyway, we're following this white wolf. He makes his way to a fork in the road and chooses to go left. We then transition back to Jack, a lone wolf in his own right, riding his motorcycle to... somewhere. We still have no clue yet of where he's going. Even Aku tells us Jack has been wandering around like a madman this entire time. Jack also makes his way to a fork in the road, and like the wolf, he chooses to go left. We then quickly transition back to the wolf and see him fight some massive green tigers. I don't feel like I have to go too much about the symbolism about the wolf and Jack, since, yeah, we transition back to Jack having to face off against another beast. A, uh, a beetle bot. And hey, he kept the spear. I was worried he'd lost that in the last fight. Yeah, Jack does his thing and blows it up. He then gets introduced to a real threat. The Daughters of Aku. They attack fast and fuck him up pretty bad. He has to go in the defensive and fast. He gets his new sword knocked out of his hands and is chipped away piece by piece, and not even doing a lick of damage to the daughters. Interspliced with this scene is the wolf and how he's losing the fight against the tigers. Jack takes a brief reprieve, and we have him arguing with his former self. We're told here that the only thing keeping Jack in this fight is the sword. Aku doesn't know that he lost it, but he's been traveling so long that it's gotten to him too much. Aku hasn't tried to find Jack in such a long time, and has only been dealing with robots until now. Jack is under the impression that the seven daughters are just machines, just nuts and bolts. Jack ponders the idea of suicide, but something inside him keeps him moving forward. This image of what I originally thought was Aku. He pushes forward with a strength and resolve. He makes his way to some type of abandoned temple to hide, with the seven daughters really close behind. What we get next is a very intense game of hide and seek. The following scenes are just genius. Jack goes into a room with a firefly for light, and fights one of the daughters in the darkness. The scene uses the clashing of metal to make light, and after all this, all of them find his location. Tension is back up as he dodges them and falls into each of their hiding spots. We have all the daughters make their way up to a burial chamber of this fallen empire. The room is illuminated with many fireflies, and very intense sounding music plays as they look around the room together. Jack is hiding in one of the coffins with a firefly, and as its light goes out, they all attack him at once. Jack is damaged even more, and we get ourselves an amazingly well choreographed fight with Jack using the Fallen King's axe. It doesn't last long, though. He runs through the temple to escape and is cornered by the one with a katana. He quickly disarms her and slits her throat, killing her almost instantly. I was definitely expecting this. We know it's not Aki, the one that had some character development. I think this death is here to cement the brainwashing these women were instilled, that Jack is some evil bastard. Jack is surprised at what he did. Somber music then plays and Jack is disgusted with his actions to take a life. I mean, he did kill organic beings before, but... I think maybe it's because it was a woman he killed. Jack is a samurai, and while there wasn't anything against women specifically, if we take the episode The Princess and the Bounty Hunters as an example, Jack has no problem killing men, but would only go as far as punch a woman in the face. As a general rule, Jack as a samurai doesn't want to kill unless he has to. I guess the shock was mostly from the idea that he only thought Aku sent robots at him. He picks up his frequency blade and tries to make his way to the exit. He primes up an explosion and bails out into the river below. Jack bleeds a crap ton as he floats downstream, and we then transition back to the wolf and his fight. His opponents may be slain, but the wolf itself is dead. Is Jack dead? Well, he might actually be. 
Maybe not dead dead, but more like God of War Kratos dead. I didn't see the three episode screening for season 5, so I can only go by the images in the trailer. It seems like he's going to be in some kind of eclipse world like in Berserk. All I can say is this episode should have been an hour long premiere with the first. It's so strong in the action and sound design. There's character development with Jack arguing with himself, a strength and resolve we get, whether that's in the realm of reality is still to be seen, and we get really powerful symbolism, albeit a little bit forced in. Jack is a character that has been pushed to his absolute limits, a lot, but here it felt like it was really impossible for him to win, but he does in the end. I'm sure Aki is still alive after the explosion, again, she had this moment right here. That's Chekhov's gun right there. You don't make a scene like this and not follow up on it. This episode was almost everything I waited for with the long-awaited return of Samurai Jack. Just wish I got it last week or saw the screening, but oh well. This episode, as an addition to the first one, really made me happy. We got Aku being Aku and not some dark lord. We have Jack pushed to his limits against some intriguing set of villains. We got blood, explosions, and some really amazing choreography. And this episode had so much attention to detail to it. Motion blurring, sound effects, textures, all these angles. I, I mean, it's just insane how much went into this. As for setting a foundation for the rest of the season, this episode gave us Aku trying to figure out why Jack won't die. Jack telling us Aku doesn't know he lost the sword, we get ourselves a mysterious face to see, and Jack being badass. This episode fulfilled all of what I wanted out of a premiere, and we're only two thirds of the way finished. I think there's gonna be some development for the daughters left to be seen, and the reveal of whoever this is. But aside from that, I, I, I have nothing. I don't know what to expect anymore. All I can say is I'm excited for the next episode. I just want to see Jack kick ass in wherever this is. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you like my voice and want to stay tuned on more reviews of Samurai Jack, then please subscribe and tick that chime next to it to stay updated. Likes and shares are always super nice, and I do read every comment. Let's get hyped for episode 3. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.